We're showing the kids how electricity works at Bring Your Kids to Work Day. Here we are creating a simple motor. We're forming a coil using the highlighter. We're stripping the insulation off of one end. The other end we're stripping the insulation just on half of it. And then we're putting in our little holder here, which is made with the rubber racers and the two paper clips. And we're using the permanent magnet as our uh, permanent magnet source and then we're using our battery to provide current to make the electromagnet that's turning on and off. The action of uh, attraction and repulsion will cause the motor to rotate. Got it. Yes you did. I can reverse the direction. Okay. Uh, anybody that's else need direction from where you're going next? Okay. And I, I guess see it changing direction. Yeah, that's that really start. cool. Ready? I like okay, it. Look at the spark. Oh my gosh, I just saw it. Little spark. The great thing about rocks is the closer you look at them and the places you find them and the more you know about them, the more it tells a story. One of the things that geologists do at BPA is we look at rock materials for construction purposes. Now the advantage of having a silica in a rock is that the silica makes for a good insulator. So when we're walking on a substation, we don't want to be part of the path of the electrical currents to ground. That's a bad place to be. And the power is carried over conductors like this one. And you see that there's no insulation on this. There's some plastic tape down here, but that's all. An extension cord at home has a plastic cover on it or a rubber jacket on it so that you can't touch the wires and get shocked. But this doesn't have that. It's just it's just bare wire. So if you touched it, you'd get shocked. And the, so the way we protect everyone is we put this so high up in the air that you can't touch it. Okay, then we're going this. That one broke on the line. That one broke on the line. And this one we broke here in the lab. We're going to break this piece of rope. The crews that use the rope want to know that it's good and strong. So this machine is good for half a million pounds. About half. Interesting. Here's kind of the main key components of the reaction. You got your caffeine aspartame, which is sugar, artificial sweetener, uh, potassium benzoate, which is a food preservative. But the Mentos itself has all these little pits in, in the surface of it, and that's really the key to, to the reaction. If we don't monitor the gases inside the equipment, things like this can happen. This is a picture of a transformer that blew up, caught fire, all sorts of bad, nasty things happen. Welcome to the uh, high voltage test hall. This is where we do the indoor high voltage testing. There's two general categories of tests that we do here in the high voltage lab. We do what we call power frequency tests. And power frequency is the, the type of power that gets transmitted on power lines, gets consumed in homes. Uh, so that's what we're testing with over here. And on this side of the lab, we're testing with lightning. So we can, we can produce up to 2 million volts of lightning here in the building, and up to 1.1 million volts of power frequency here. What was your favorite thing you saw today? The, um, the color when it pops out. Yeah. The lightning? Not the lightning. Not the lightning. <laughs> Do you learn about like energy and stuff? And it's really cool because how electricity works and how the rope broke. And adults have more power than children. Great.